What is glory? Christ is coming in his glory. It, isn't that a nice religious word? We use it all the time. Very often if someone said, okay, well, would you please uh, describe what that means for me? Uh, we'd have trouble doing that. Uh, uh, um, let me get a dictionary, right? What is, what is glory? Well, it comes from a word that originally meant weight. Simply weight, something that had weight to it. But it was one of those words, as words do, that transformed over time from its original thought, beginning to point to the idea of wealth, because gold is heavy, right? Silver, all of these other things. But uh, it takes on a special meaning when we get into the scriptures. When we say that Jesus is coming in glory, what in the world are we talking about? I'm not sure that I can do it justice. I will attempt. But our Savior said, when the Son of Man shall come in His glory. We often use that word, glory, without thinking much about it. But in this context, this is what it means. The radiant, outshining of all his perfections and attributes. We're going to know that it is God penetrating our atmosphere and coming into our world. His splendor as almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful. His glory, his radiant, his shining perfections and attributes as the God-man, it will be overwhelming. It will be like a sight we can compare almost nothing else to. Maybe, maybe looking up at the sun in July in Florida at noonday. It's going to be splendid. It's going to be rich. It's going to be weighty. It's going to be overwhelming. We will have sense overload. Because it's the glory of God come down to sinful human beings. Go back to the scriptures. What happened when Isaiah saw the glory of God in the temple? He fell on his face. I'm undone. I'm a dead man. That will be a worldwide effect. When John the beloved apostle who leaned upon Jesus' breast when he was here, when God gave him the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he wrote it down in the apocalypse, he sees the glory of Jesus Christ and he falls on his face. It isn't going to be like, oh, I wonder if that's like something from uh, Area 51. No, Jesus, the God-man, will come and it will be known to every human being on this planet. His glory, the outshining of His splendor, His perfections, His attributes, His Godness will shine through His manness. Jesus, in all His glory, will stand in sharp contrast to the humble life that He lived in this world. In the New Testament Scriptures, we find, that, uh, we find what theologi uh, theologians often call the humiliation and the glory of Christ. Those are two aspects of the person and work of Christ. His humiliation when He lived in this world. His glory when He ascended up into the realm of heaven in that astonishing place of purity, holiness, righteousness, unstained goodness, a love beyond anything that we can possibly imagine. You should read sometime uh, Jonathan Edwards' Heaven, A World of Love, building out of the scriptures. He paints an extraordinary picture. 
The fact is, brethren, we're so submerged in our flesh and in our sin and in this filthy culture and perverse culture that we're living in, it's hard for us to even imagine something clean, something pure, 